Well, hello again. Uh, very exciting for me to be able to chat briefly with a good friend of mine, uh, Eric Ludi, who is over in Colorado. Hello, Eric. Dave Firth, uh, it is a, a treat spending time with you. We, uh, we go way back, don't we? Uh, we have a whole uh, bunch of water under that bridge. Uh, I always love seeing you. We do. We do go way back. Um, and as I was saying to you earlier, my nickname for you was a very complimentary one. And your nickname for me, in my mind, was less than complimentary. But we don't need to get into that. <laughs> Still very good friends. <laughs> Eric, you've been involved with Ellerslie Discipleship um, Training for many years. Give us a, a brief overview of what that program is, what the facility is, and what you do as a ministry. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm actually on our campus. We have a a campus in Windsor, Colorado, beautiful time of year. I know you guys are sort of hitting the winter months. We're hitting uh, late spring, just about ready for summer, uh, right on the lake at the base of the mountains. It's gorgeous here. I know I can't try and convince anyone from New Zealand that Colorado is beautiful because you guys have arguably the most beautiful spot on earth. So it's always rough uh, when I'm doing an interview with a, uh, with a Kiwi. But uh, it's uh, our passion here is a similar passion that you have, Dave, and I think that's what bonded us in the first place, and it's just to really see the strength of the body of Christ return. I always like to use the term majesty. It's like, hey, something's missing in Christianity. What is it? And we're looking around, you know, searching the drawers and opening up the cabinets, trying to figure out what's missing. And my simple word for it is majesty. It's the grandeur of Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. We've dimmed it down into this little box, uh, and we've lost the power of it. We've lost the bigness of it. We've lost the expectation that it will change our life. And as a result, we putter around uh, in our version of Christianity, and we accept the enemy's movements. We, he comes in like a flood, and we just sort of get swallowed up in it, and we moan and groan and complain about it instead of rising up and kicking him in the teeth. And so that's a big passion for me, as I know it is for you, is that men rise up, understand the position we have in Jesus Christ, and we exert the authority we have in this earth, in this hour, in this time, and see this world change. And so that's what we do here. We disciple people to live out a robust, majestic version of Christianity. What a great introduction to wonderful ministry. That's very exciting to hear. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about specifically, how people can engage, even people over here in New Zealand. Lots of men that may have come across your books in Manor Stores or read articles of yours in Authentic Magazine. So a couple of things I want to talk to you about, but you spend a lot of, you have written a lot of books and you have done a lot of teaching. I think the Daily Thunder, I can't remember how long it's been going, but that's a daily episode, a, a uh, a meaty chunk of uh, Bible teaching every day, and you've been churning those out for quite some time. So how do you combine the writing, the speaking, and then running that ministry and being a dad and a husband and all that other stuff? <laughs> yeah, a lesson I refer to it as the impossible life. If you try and do, if any of us, and I don't care at what level of development we are, but the calling of the Christian is impossible. And I think it's actually important for us to get that out on the table as men. We have different sectors of our life, and if we try and be excellent in all of them, we're going to find out that, you know, say, say we have six dimensions of our life, you know, like fatherhood being one of them, being a husband, being another, being in ministry is one of them, handling our finances perfectly, uh, turning outward and serving those around us, uh, taking care of extended family. Let's just imagine there's six of these. Uh, I think we all have the capacity as human beings or just as men to handle about 2.5 of them at any given time with excellence. And that might be an overstatement, right? So how do you live well in all of these zones? And that's, what, that's why we use the term, the impossible life. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit, a dependent life that finally acknowledges, okay, God, I admit, I can't do this, but I know you can. And it's been a tremendous learning curve for Leslie and I, Leslie's my wife, to learn how to, because we have six kids, uh, to to learn how to put emphasis where emphasis is needed, to trust God to give us grace and success in areas that uh, we need supernatural enablement uh, to pull off. And I know you and I have compared notes on this many times. It's like we esteem the perfect life, but we don't live it, uh, especially in our own strength. But if anything good is coming out of our life, it's because God has gotten a hold of it. He's moved inside, he's made this his body, and he's the one that's now calling the shots. And that's 
you know, for us, we live a very disciplined life. Uh, we, uh, we don't have a lot of downtime. Right now with uh, COVID-19, we are in such a humorous season. I don't even know how else to describe it. It's humorous. First of all, I think most of us think that when we look out outside and we're like, are, is, am I on candid camera here? Do you guys have candid camera down in, uh, in New Zealand? We did uh, some years ago. Are you showing your age yeah. a little bit? I think we had it in yeah. England yeah. in the <laughs> 1930s or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we've had to cancel our programs for the spring and we just had to cancel our program for the summer. And it changes the dynamics of so many things because discipleship is personal. Church is personal. Uh, no offense to Zoom, but Zoom relationships only go to a certain dimension. My, my definition of a Zoom uh, church meeting is like you're staring at the, at the letters and the numbers H2O. And you're like, yes, we need that in our life. And there's a big difference between staring at the, at the letters and numbers of H2O and esteeming it and actually drinking it. And I would say intimate one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, in-person fellowship is just different. It has a dimension that goes beyond the truth. It, it's living truth. And so uh, in this hour, we are, here, here's what I'm going to say. It might shock you. We're thriving. I'm thriving because I need God more right now to lead this organization, just like you do. We, we're having to be very creative right now. I, I think COVID-19 leads you and I to be talking on Zoom and doing an interview instead of an article. And that's part of the fun, I think, if we can look at it that way as Christians. This is actually a joy. It's a great adventure, even though we're really excited for it to be done. And um, I know you've got to shoot off shortly and, and help with the, the Set Apart Girl Conference. Uh, when we were in Colorado a few years ago, my wife was able to come in person, I had an absolute blast, but that's going to be online this year. Um, but there are a couple of other programs that recently we've talked about that, um, that I, I've become aware that you're going to be doing online. The first is the um, Honorable Manhood Program, and then the, the, the Ellerslie Online Training, what you're going to be doing this uh, this five-week training. So yeah. do you want to share a little bit about those two things? Uh, well, there are two significant passion points. Honorable Manhood was designed for online. So, you know, whereas some of these things that I'm doing that weren't initially designed, like discipleship is hard to do online at the depths that God desires uh, to bring a life. But hey, we'll take what we can do right now. You know, if I'm in a prison cell, I'm going to do what I can in that prison cell, even though there's limitation. It doesn't mean I have to stop singing. But uh, I'm so excited about the honorable manhood training. I, I know for you and I, we get on the topic of godly masculinity in it, and we just start talking louder. It's like our volume begins to swell because this is a passion point for us. We see the devil's move against masculinity. We see him putting the damper pedal on it. We just want to kick his foot off that damper pedal and get the full volume swell again. And that's what honorable manhood is. It was originally designed for my son, Hudson, who's my oldest. And it, you know, I, I actually developed a training model because I've written 12 books on sexuality out of, out of our, I think we're at 28 books, about 12 of them are on sexuality and like relationship building, manhood, femininity. It's, it's on that in some regard. And so the pressure sort of came on me when my son was reaching that 12, 13 year old age range. And I'm starting to feel, you know, cold sweats and, and everything, because it's one thing to talk to a, an audience of 10,000 people about this. It's a whole different thing to suddenly be imparting it to my own son. I have no idea. I don't know that I can explain why it's harder, but it is, which gives me a tremendous empathy for all the dads out there that are like, you know, we can say it on paper. A dad needs to, you know, be the one communicating this. Yes, a dad has a role in this, but that doesn't make it easy, especially when it wasn't modeled for us. So we're like making this up as it goes along. We know it's needed, but how do you do this? And that's where this honorable manhood comes in is, I divided up the training in Hudson's life into seven events. And uh, in the Honorable Manhood training, I started to take some of the content that I was working as I was working with Hudson, sort of building precept upon precept. And it, it became so evident that this is what other fathers need, almost like a starter package, a help in the process. And that's what it's turned into. It's actually so powerful. And so men from all over the world have been joining me for these Honorable Manhood trainings. And the content is what pithy, inspiring, manly. Okay. I mean, I can keep going on the adjectives, but Dave, are you sold yet? I mean, this is, this is good stuff. Uh, so, yeah. 
I mean, we, my uh, my son who turns 15 the day after the online program starts, we're, we're in. Don't worry, we'll be there. <laughs> and so I'm really excited. This is our third round of it, and it's just been tremendously enriching for my life to participate with these fathers in this, and it's been enriching for them as well. So it's a neat process, and I would love for your audience to participate in it. I would love to see a whole bunch of Kiwis sign up. We'd have a you know, sort of a Kiwi branch of honorable manhood down there. We'd have to, you know, start something up. Maybe you're in charge of it, uh, Dave. Uh, I'm all over that. So, and, and we talked earlier, what, uh, the, the honorable manhood program, there's a cost to it at the moment, but what we're going to do, and uh, we'll put somewhere around this article how to do that, is make the first session available for a couple of weeks. So up until the 12th of June, so from Monday the 1st of June till Friday the 12th, It'll be available or accessible from here, from where you're viewing this, um, for the next 12 days. Then people can get a taste of the program itself, which is really cool that you're able to do that. I'm excited about that, Dave. In fact, you're the uh, first person to ever warm that out of me. So uh, this is the first <laughs> time we've ever had one of those sessions uh, floating around somewhere. So uh, it's all big. Dave knows how to, you guys know my nickname for Dave, don't you? Have we, have we said that at all? Here we go. Uh, no, okay. no I, I thought this might come out. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it's it's PW, and that's that's my nickname for him. And so uh, he, when I first, I don't know what the situation was, but you just kept pestering uh, was me pestering about, something, yeah, I was uh, about something. And so I I called him the persistent widow, which you'll notice persistent widow is PW. And so that's actually been his nickname from the beginning. That's why he's a little sensitive about that, guys. If you call him PW, you'll notice he turns a little red in the cheeks. But well, uh, but you, what you didn't say is what I tell people about you. So one of the legends in, in my faith and my walk, who's also one of your legends, Major Ian Thomas, the founder of Torchbearers. And when I, people that don't know you, I described you as Major Thomas 50 years ago which is an astounding compliment. Can you compare me to an annoying uh, old lady? So <laughs> I think I'm quite uh, within my rights to be a little offended. <laughs> uh, well, it's a compliment in my book. You're, in your book, that's a compliment. In my book, this is a tremendous compliment, Dave. Uh, but that's why, that's why your audience is getting this first episode of Honorable Manhood is because you're PW. That you need to realize, uh, all your audience needs to know, the reason you are so effective in what you do is you are unrelenting. You just keep going after it, and you do not take no for an answer. And that's actually part of your spiritual makeup, and I, I love it about you, which is why PW just fits you, fits okay. you well. Well, well I'll, I'll, I'll take it then. So, so that's the honorable manhood. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the online uh, Ellerslie training. Yes, so in all of our years, we've been doing this for over a decade now, in all of Ellerslie's history, we have never released an online training. We've, we've had online follow-up to our training, which is on site, because we're just, we're purists in the sense of discipleship that, hey, if we're going to do this, we want to do it face-to-face. -face. We want to do it the classic way, because we feel that that's the way it's designed. However, what do you do if you're in a COVID-19 season? And so over the summer, we had to uh, cancel our summer semester. You can just imagine what that's like after having to cancel our spring and uh, spring semesters. And so it's been a challenge for us because this is what we're built for. This is what we're passionate about. But in the process, I still remember the staff meeting when we were looking around and we we're like, hey guys, uh, we could do some online stuff. And I don't remember how it came out, but once it did, I tell you what, it's like you could almost feel the angel choir uh, and that we were sort of sensing that this was some hallowed ground that we all caught the vision. It's like, yeah, let's turn this this summer into an online version of what we do. And it's, it's a great map. I mean, the map for it's a five week stretch from June 15th through like July 17th. I don't know the exact dates, but it's five weeks. And it is powerhouse stuff. I mean, it is the, the training at Ellerslie's life changing to start with, but this is actually a really good sampling of it. If I could say it that way, it's like, Okay, you know, you're going to get more if you came out here, you're going to get about five hours a day of training, whereas if uh, online, you're going to get 30 minutes. So you can, you can see the, the distinctions are, are, are dramatic, but as a result, people can access it and it's donation based too. So as a result, there's no excuse for anyone to participate in it. So I would love uh, for people that have just been hungering to go deeper with Christ to really get a clear vision of how to live this Christianity of course, I really want you guys out here in Windsor. I don't want this to be a, a replacement, but if, 
you know, when you're in New Zealand, it's not that easy to get out here anyway. So the risk is worth it to say, hey, guys, try this out. Enjoy it. I hope your life has changed. And I would just love to spend time with you this summer. So uh, a whole bunch of Kiwis in the honorable manhood, a whole bunch of Kiwis in the Ellerslie online training. And Eric's a happy person this summer. And there is room, of course, to get people over to Colorado, but we have talked potentially at some point in the future, maybe even a, an Ellerslie training program out here, but we won't uh, start adding things to your plate right now. We've got um, plenty to do. Um, hey, Eric, look, I know you've got lots to do today and uh, very gracious of you to make time for us. And it's always great to catch up with you. Um, a couple of places that people can get uh, access to content or information about these programs um, and then where you've got blogs, um, sermons, short films, Ellerslie Ells Produce. Can you tell us about those? Well, you know, if you have, I don't know, are you going to be able to put information around this Ooh. when you frame oh, it? So, that somewhere. Around it. Somewhere, yeah. Uh, so Ellerslie.com, it always helps if someone has it in, printed in front of you and I don't have that in front of you guys right now, but uh, it's actually the birthplace of William Wallace. Isn't that cool, Dave? Did you know that? Did I ever tell you that? You did. Uh, and what's, what's really yeah. cool is for New Zealanders, there's actually a suburb of Auckland, which is also called Ellerslie, which can yeah. be confusing when searching. But so most people are familiar with the spelling, at least. So that's good. That's true. That's true. You guys have no excuse for not being able to spell it correctly. So Ellerslie.com is where we have you know, all my sermons. It's going to have all the information about Ellerslie online and all our trainings. We do have trainings coming up. We have week-long trainings and we have five-week trainings in this fall that I would love for you guys to consider and look into. We also have a lot of short films I think you guys would enjoy. Uh, and then ericludy.com. Uh, and that is where my honorable manhood is hosted. And that's also where my blog is, my manly blog. Uh, and uh, it's, it's good manly stuff. Uh, so if you like authentic, uh, you'd like the manly blog. Uh, so uh, so that's, those are some good uh, hangouts. That's, that's great. Thank you. Uh, we've had some uh, tastings of your teaching through uh, the magazine. And what we'll also do, so authenticmagazine.co.nz forward slash issue 10, the number 10, um, and uh, lots of other content on there. But certainly around this article, we'll point people off to some other things, some little nuggets and favorites, and then all the information about the Honorable Manhood series and then the the Ellerslie Online, what do you call it? Ellerslie Online Discipleship Training? I think it's called Ellerslie Online. Uh, yes, uh, that, yes, let me be more confident in that. Ellerslie Online. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, well, uh, one day when I was coming to visit you uh, to meet, I got there early coming down from the mountains and sat in at the back of a class for, um, I think, just short of an hour of incredible teaching. And I think it took me a while to recover from that. So there is a difference between what some perceive as training and a really good Christ-centered Bible training. So I would, I'm a big advocate of what goes on at Ellerslie. So very thankful that we have the opportunity to plug some of our New Zealand men into this. Eric, you're a great guy, a great friend. Thank you so much for making the time to be with us this morning and I'll allow, let, allow you to scamper off to your next activity. Thanks, Dave. I really appreciate it. And I, I just can't wait for us to finally whip up that excuse to get uh, me down there uh, <laughs> because we just keep talking about it. But keep being PW and I have a hunch it's going to happen uh, soon. I will do my very best. God bless <laughs> you. See you soon. Bye-bye.